Hey, it's Mike here, and today a study found that a fatty acid in meat and dairy fights cancer, or as one TikTok expert said, Scientists at the University of Chicago recently just published a study proving that eating more meat helps you fight cancer. Diarrhea level pseudoscience dispenser Paul Saladino hopped on it as well. For too long, red meat has been incorrectly vilified and incorrectly associated with cancer. Now, it appears that that woman and Paul didn't actually read the study that they're concerned conclusions go against what the actual authors of the study say. They're overstating everything. And we're going to see that other research actually points to some dangers and risks of this fatty acid. So we're going to look at a ton of studies to get a better picture of this and you know, see if it really does prove that meat fights cancer. We have people straight up saying beef fights cancer now, like Sean Baker. Anyway, let's go. Let's just let Paul explain. A recent study published in the journal Nature found that when trans vaccinic acid a fatty acid found exclusively in milk and meat. Ugh, the fact that he thought that aggressive uttering was gonna be like an appealing piece of footage to use there. Ugh. Of ruminant animals and in human milk, when humans eat milk and meat of ruminant animals, helped reprogram cytotoxic T cells in a way that could fight cancers. And the TikTok comments under these videos are pretty much exactly what you would expect. Can hear the snowflake vegans crying about this news. Cooking bacon as I watch, lol. I am immortal. I trust this dude with my life. I will die eating grass-fed steak. I knew I love salami for a reason. Also, your eyes are really pretty. The fatty acid that we're talking about is transvaccinic acid, and I have noticed that a lot of these pro-meat people in their videos say vaccinic acid. I don't know if they're trying to like distance it from vaccines or whatever, but it all comes back to the same Latin root, vaca, and the term vaccine coming from the cow smallpox virus, vaccinia. So vaccinia, vaccinic, uh, I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced. And this study here in the journal Nature came out a couple months ago, and I, know, I thought, you know, people aren't really gonna care that much about about this, I don't really need to cover it. But then I realized that this is actually holding pretty strong here from a recent Jimmy Dore episode. His guest actually mentioned it. The recent studies found it fights cancer. Transvesic acid, it's called. Oh, really? Yeah. You'd think they'd love that because it's got trans in the title. You would think so. Yeah, so people are latching onto it. They probably will keep latching onto it. So I got to respond. Well, I've made videos in the past about how vegetable oils are generally not a health food. I have a whole ranking thing looking at some that I believe are healthy. But, you know, these people here, they religiously hate on seed oils. They say they're the worst, they're the devil. But one thing that they all failed to mention is that transvaccinic acid is also present in hydrogenated oil. In fact, this study estimates that at the turn of the century, about 50% of transvaccinic acid in North America was from hydrogenated vegetable oil. <laughs> Though, since we banned hydrogenated oil, it is certainly gonna be lower now. So even though vaccinic acid basically translates to cow acid, it's also present in hydrogenated oils, which is really weird because Paul and other people did not mention that. None of the headlines mentioned that. A fatty acid found exclusively in milk and meat. They act like it only exists in animal fat, but you know, based off this research, we should actually be taking hydrogenated oil and chugging it for transvaccinic acid. But of course that doesn't fit that animal fat is healthy narrative that people love to hear nowadays and they would tell you you know eat butter instead of these oils like canola oil you know and butter would be a pretty solid source of transvaccinic acid but from the study on 500,000 people butter was associated with increased cancer unlike vegetable oils and canola was associated with lower total mortality butter was associated with higher and I should add that margarine was also associated with higher and this is a case where some of it especially from that study time period would be hydrogenated oils containing TVA. And I would bet almost anything that these people would say, oh, having transvaccinic acid in hydrogenated oils doesn't outweigh the negatives of those hydrogenated oils while being completely blind to the negative other aspects of animal products. And of course, saturated fat, heme iron, NEU5GC, heterocyclic amines, et cetera, et cetera. The researchers actually say that giving transvaccinic acid to mice promoted anti-tumor immunity in vivo in the mice. Then the researchers went on to test this in both mouse and human cells in cell culture and saw the same promotion of anti-tumor activities and reprogramming of cytotoxic T cells, also known as CD8 positive T cells. Yep, these main findings here are talking about either you know, animal studies or petri dish studies here. We don't have like actual 
outcomes based on giving people this transvaccinic acid. Now more transvaccinic outcome related research in a bit, but I just have to get back to that wild statement by that woman, Isabel Brown. Here she is. Recently just published a study proving that eating more meat helps you fight cancer. More specifically, when you consume a specific fatty acid called transvaccinic acid, it's commonly found in beef, lamb, and dairy products, your body has a stronger ability to fight with your immune cells against tumors and cancerous growth. Now, this is a perfect example of TikTokers going and just completely twisting the message or twisting the results or what the actual scientists say. And I have a, a little mystery quote here for you guys that I think just responds to this well. It says, quote, a high intake of red meat has been positively associated with risk of many cancers, including breast, colorectal, colon, and rectal cancer. Uh, what is that mystery source? Oh, well, it's actually the study itself. And we'll get into the author's views and motivations in a little bit, but it's just wild that somebody who appears to have biomedical science related degrees coming up with a conclusion like this from the research. Oh wait, it's because you know she's more of a political commentator than anything else at this point. You know, she's worked with climate denying PragerU and other organizations that I do not consider very scientific. And sadly at this point, meat has become super political. Anyway, we can move on from her. And I really quickly want to flip the script here because you know if there was a similar study result that was negative for meat based on some aspect of it mechanistically affecting something, they wouldn't be shouting that from the rooftops. And I know someone's brain is currently breaking from this wild strand of hair. Don't worry, I fix it in about 30 seconds. And in this case, a counter story would be research showing that cholesterol triggers cancer and helps it progress. Now from this scientific news report on a Duke Cancer Institute study, they say that chronically high cholesterol levels are associated with increased risk of breast cancer and with worse outcomes in most cancer. So the Duke Cancer team went ahead and identified a mechanism that underpins how breast cancer cells use cholesterol to develop tolerance to stress, making them invulnerable as they migrate from the original tumor site. And Paul Saladino, well, he's an ex-carnivore dieter now, he's still obviously really pro-meat. You know, and one of his most famous moments is going on Joe Rogan and saying that his LDL was 533. LDL was very high. It was 533 milligrams per deciliter. What's normal? Uh, less than 100 or around 100. So 100 is preferred? Preferred by the mainstream cardiologist, right? Okay. It's since gone down from quitting the carnivore diet, but it's still too damn high. So it's just funny that he's telling you to eat meat and dairy so that you can use one tiny ingredient in it to fight cancer. Well, guess what? There's another ingredient in those, cholesterol, that helps cancer. So then we have to ask, do we actually have any studies on transvaccinic acid and cancer in people? There's a review that put a bunch of these studies together. You can see that four out of five of the studies on cancer and levels of trans transvaccinic acid in blood and blood cells showed an increased risk. One of them on prostate and three of them on breast cancer. What? It's not looking good here. And to one of those studies, yeah, the people with the highest level of transvaccinic acid had over 350% the risk of breast cancer compared to those who had lower levels. You know, these results are not pointing at transvaccinic acid having an actual meaningful beneficial effect on cancer in real humans. And is this negative effect even from transvaccinic acid? Acid itself, maybe some of it is, we'll get to that in a second, but it might be also what it is packed with in meat and dairy, those other things I mentioned earlier. And this video is sponsored by Seeds DS01, Daily Symbiotic, which is a prebiotic to feed those probiotics that it has in it. It has a lot, it has 53.6 billion active bacterial cell units in there, which are scientifically shown to support various areas of health. We're talking about gut barrier, gut immunity, digestive health, skin health, heart health, and more. And if you watch my channel, you know that we've gone deep into this science on these different strains in seed, whether it has to do with seed helping with antibiotic recovery or these strains effects on eczema, which are amazing. And I haven't talked quite as much about the actual pill itself because they have a special coating here called the Viacap. Yeah, they said the Viacap was engineered for a precision release of the contents of the inner probiotic capsule through the small intestine, resulting in full delivery of, you know, what's on the label to the colon chamber. Or as Harry Potter referred to it, the Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> and they've done studies to simulate human digestion and they found that Yes, approximately 100% of the good little guys in here 
are still there when they make it to the colon. Anyway, Lindy and I have been taking seed for like three years now, and Lindy especially has seen some benefits to the point where she's pretty much obsessed with it. And so, you know, if you wanna try it, feel free to click on the link below and use the code Mike25, M-I-C-25, for 25% off your first month's supply. All right. And this really reminds me of when you're actually determining causation. There's some criteria to guide you, like the Bradford Hill criteria. It's a few different points. Now, it's failing a ton of these, like consistency and coherence. We just aren't seeing consistent observations or coherent epidemiological findings on this. Uh, yeah, it's consistently in the opposite direction of what you're claiming for cancer here. Which brings me to another Bradford Hill criteria, which is is biological gradient, is higher exposure to this given thing, increasing or decreasing risk the way that you're hoping it does? Well, in this case, it's the opposite. Again, increasing risk. It doesn't appear to be causing cancer to go down. And this looks bad in terms of the biological gradient for mortality as well. This study looked at various fatty acid levels and they found that looking at transvaccinic acid, quote, figure 2B revealed an approximately linear and positive association between vaccinic acid and all-cause mortality. Ouch. It's funny that none of this was included in any of the news article, maybe because it's bad news about people's habits that are also bad. That's the saying, right? And another reason it might be connected to higher mortality is because it's a freaking trans fat. These things that often we're told to eat zero of to lower heart disease risk. And of course, heart disease is the leading killer. And from studies like this one, total trans fat intake is associated with increased mortality. But some people have said, no, ruminant trans fats are magical. You know, they don't actually negatively affect cardiometabolic risk. And to be fair, there are some studies that don't make it seem like it's a really much higher risk or they're inconclusive. But researchers say that's because trans fats from ruminants as a total percentage of calories is just so low that you can't get any statistical power there when we've seen trans fats from hydrogenated oil sometimes getting over 5% of calories where you can really pick up the negative effect. Now, so is transvaccinic acid associated with heart disease, for example? Well, there's a serious lack of data around here from the Nurses Health Study. Yes, people who had coronary heart disease at least had higher levels of transvaccinic acid than people who didn't. And I've seen some claims out there that these ruminant trans fatty acids Acids, you know, the single main one is transvaccinic acid, are just built different. Like they're not going to raise your LDL or create that heart disease risk that way. Well, from this 2020 review on nine randomized control trials, ruminant trans fatty acids actually raised LDL at a higher rate than industrial trans fatty acids. And of course, I need to remind everybody that our Mendelian randomization studies where they take, you know, genetic differences and suss out results that way, you know, the highest quality stuff shows that LDL is causal to atherosclerosis. And we can even look at a little bit more detail here from a study like this one showing that, yeah, transvaccinic acid increased ApoB, which is a even slightly better metric than LDL because even though it's mostly LDL, it's a particle count. And because more of those particles means more of a risk of penetrating that artery wall, you know, that's even a stronger relationship than LDL. And based on another review that notes this LDL transvaccinic acid relationship, they issue a warning saying that, quote, practices resulting in increased levels of this group of fatty acids in ruminant milk and meat should be carefully reconsidered. What are they talking about? Yeah, they're talking about some companies going and trying to increase the level of transvaccinic acid in their milk products, for example, and saying, hey, uh, you should reconsider that because it's probably gonna lead to more heart disease. Ironically, one way to increase transvaccinic acid in milk is to feed them more of those evil seed oils. All right, now let's get into the author's view and their perhaps conflict of interest here. And a lot of people, you know, their knee-jerk reaction might be, hey, this was probably funded by the meat and dairy industry. Well, yeah, it was absolutely used by the meat and dairy industry. It seems to be more of just a boon to them that they got for free. As you might have guessed by this statement I mentioned earlier, highlighting, oh, there's that major risk of red meat. I mean, we're talking again about a class 2A carcinogen with unprocessed and class 1A with processed meat. The next sentence is essentially insinuating that we should just be supplementing with transvaccinic acid and bypassing meat altogether because of its risks. 
And yes, there does appear to be some financial motivation here because one of the main authors, Mr. Chen, has patents pending on transvexenic acid and its derivatives. And really zooming out, it seems like this team's mission, or at least Chen's mission, is to just go around and find various ingredients in foods that when isolated might actually benefit us that we don't know about yet. And to show that I think he's a bit more neutral on here, he straight up says, hey, there's some plant-based derivatives that very likely have this same cancer fighting effect through the same mechanism. But I wanna go back to Isabel for a second here because there was one you know, pretty dramatic claim that she made that I think deserves a response and it's fair to address it. They also analyzed patients currently undergoing cancer treatment for lymphoma and found that patients who had higher concentrations of transvicenic acid or TVA were responding to cancer treatment more effectively. Now that's quite a claim and to be fair, she's getting that claim directly from this University of Chicago article. So what did these study actually do here? Well, first of all, this appears to be a secondary thing that they were looking at. You know, they got some blood samples that were stored and just compared five people who responded better to this T cell therapy than people that didn't respond as well. And were like, hey, the levels of TVA were higher in the better responders. But there was a serious lack of detail about methodology and everything for this particular aspect of the study, which again was secondary. You know, a 10 person cross-sectional study, which is essentially what this is, is insanely small. By contrast, the study showing high transvaccinic acid levels and 3.7 times the risk of breast cancer was about 36 times larger at 360 people. Now, there could have been other reasons that TVA was higher. You know, maybe these already healthier people were able to just eat more food, period. You know, there's so much going on here. No, we would need to actually give people more TVA and randomize them and see what their outcomes are. This study was miles away from that. In the end, there are a lot of really important points here. Firstly, that one aspect of a food does not represent the whole food in its entirety. I mean, for just a comparison, not an equating situation. You know, cigarettes have tobacco, which has antioxidants. That doesn't mean that smoking cigarettes is healthy, but that is also likely why we see an increased risk of cancer with with red meat and these other meats here. You know, transvaccinic acid, even if there is truly a positive effect, is completely being drowned out by everything else that is in these products. And it's being drowned out to the point where we're seeing, you know, increased TVA, meaning increased mortality, meaning increased breast cancer across the board, which is just completely against their narrative. So yeah, what is essentially a mouse and petri dish study is not absolute proof that you should be eating meat and dairy to fight cancer. It's a completely un hinged opinion. So this is again another insane misuse of science to push a high meat and high dairy way of eating that increases the risk for the exact diseases they're claiming to fight. Anyway, if you would like to try Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic, click the link below and use the code MIKE25 at checkout and that'll give you 25% off your first month's supply. <laughs> Oh, we love a good pivot. Anyway, if there was anything that I missed or that you want to add, let me know down below. It was a pretty complicated study, so I wasn't able to cover every detail, obviously. But I think it's pretty clear uh, what's going on here. So, of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.